Hello everyone, today I'm back in World of Guns Gun Disassembly and uh, today we've got a very interesting rifle uh, to disassemble. We've got G the G36, um, so basically the German um, the German standard rifle, well I guess it used to be, um, now they have moved on to the uh, HK416. Um, so today we're gonna take a look at this rifle and see uh, what uh, some advantages and disadvantages of it are. Um, I haven't really seen this rifle anywhere um, outside of this game. I don't know what the operating system is like. I assume it's uh, like a, an AR system. Uh, I literally have no idea. I, th I am very certain that it is in uh, caliber 5.56. Um, but that's pretty much all I know about it. So let's jump into the field strip and see what this thing is all about. So as I said, um, not uh, anymore the standard German rifle, but it used to be for like 20 years I guess almost. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Okay, so first of all, what strikes me, the narrow profile of it, it is very very narrow as you can see. Um, very cool actually. Uh, it seems to be very light, um, just judging by the size of it. Very cool. Okay, so uh, the overall design is very uh, iconic. It is a very futuristic looking rifle. Uh, it was, by the way, adopted in, in the 90s, I believe. Uh, and of course, it replaced the famous G3 rifle. Um, so, as you can see, it has the integrated like optic on the top. I I would uh, bet that that was one of the reasons that they uh, decided to replace it, because obviously integrated optics uh, are not the best idea on rifles because uh, the optics are uh, get uh, developed much uh, faster than uh, rifles. So basically. Uh, you have to replace the optics more often um, and if you have an integrated one like this you can't really do that uh, very easily so um, I would I would I would uh, assume that the reason that they went to the 416 is because that just has like a picatinny rail and it's really easy to modify just take the old optic off and put the new one on and from a military standpoint uh, that's much easier you just uh, issue new optics to the soldiers instead of a whole new rifles um, so that's that's nice um, and also I'm not sure what the uh, what the system on this is I guess we'll find out and compare it to the 416 as well but the first impression as I said very thin rifle um, so let's take the mag out first of all uh, that seems like a, a weird magazine actually. It's not a Stanag mag, that's for sure. It's got this weird lip in the middle. That's interesting. Okay, so we can fold the stock. That's nice. So, I guess it's not an AR system because it doesn't have a buffer in the back. Uh, and also, I guess so, yeah. Um, and also the receiver shape is completely di different, so I guess it's a completely different system. Okay, so it's got a pin here, and a pin there, and the trigger control group comes off, nice, okay. And then the, uh, the spring comes out, and then the bolt, okay. Uh, so the bolt has got basically uh, it's actually the board carrier as well um, it's got uh, like a top cover on it with the charging handle which is uh, like spring loaded as you can see um, you have to pop it out interesting but the actual bolt head uh, is an AR um, bolt uh, style so that's pretty standard and I think um, it does have the same operation because I don't see a piston connected to it and there may be one disconnected piston and I think I see one actually um, it's, it's got a hole up there so I guess that's for the piston um, 
but other than that looks pretty standard uh, AR um, except of course that it's a different shape carrier okay and then we've got a bipod here by looks uh, looks like an int integrated bipod that's very interesting I'm not sure if all of them had that um, but because it's quite interesting because the French FAMAS rifle also has an integrated bipod it's sort of a different design but um, I guess they uh, they saw what the French were doing and uh, they uh, they decided they needed the bipod as well and as far as I can tell the French uh, bipod on the FAMAS is can be quite effective um, so that's pretty that's pretty cool okay so is that it we have to take something else apart I guess so uh, does the piston come out oh the handguard comes off nice okay and that's it oh yeah so as you can see there is the piston right here on the top um, very cool and it's got the spring actually wrapped around the piston so that's um, it's got two springs one for the piston and one for the bolt um, so basically the piston is not connected to the bolt at all it just uh, pushes it back and then retreat, uh, retreats under its own spring pressure and that's pretty cool okay um, I'm not sure how long the travel of the piston is but it seems to be quite short uh, so that's interesting um, sort of like the uh, the German self-loading rifles of the start of World War II um, whatever those were called um, anyway other than that it seems pretty unremarkable actually I think this rifle would be pretty uh, cheap to manufacture I'm not sure what the receiver material is uh, it looks like aluminium to me so that could be quite expensive there's uh, quite a bit of complexity in that um, okay so anyway let's put this thing back together uh, so the handguard goes on and then the bipod goes on that okay right and then we've got uh, the bolt that goes in just from the back and then we've got the spring I guess okay and this well, that's for the buttstock uh, trigger control trigger group and then butt goes on nice and then the mag Oh no, we, we got some pins here to attach the trigger group to the receiver and the back. That's pretty nice. Okay. I'm not sure if they ever sold civilian versions of this rifle. Um, let's, uh, let's disassemble this thing. Okay mag goes out and then we've got let's just do the mag quickly now here you can see how weird the the mag is it's completely different to a standard like 5.56 AR mag um, anyway we've got pins to take out uh, and then this buttstock there we go and then this trigger group all right we've got the spring uh, let's just take that apart before I forget it so there's a thingy there and then the guide rod and the spring comes off apparently nice okay there's another thing on the bottom that's like a small buffer thing uh, that's all for the spring and then we've got bolt comes out um, let's do the bolt so 
charging handle it's got a spring obviously and then we've got um, let's see how does the bolt come out there's a cross pin here that's probably got something to do with it uh, there's the firing pin okay and now the bolt comes out we've got an extractor there um, an ejector and that's about it for the bolt okay and the carrier also I think should be pretty well disassembled let's move on to the forehand so bipod comes off let's take that apart as well um, does it come apart doesn't look like it does actually that's fine hand guard there we go uh, there's nothing in there just a hollow plastic shell alright and then we've got the piston um, how does that come out that is a very good question looks like we have to we have to take the uh, flash header off as well, that's nice. And then bayonet lug, nice. Okay. And then the gas piston comes off. Uh, I mean the gas port. The gas block, I should say. That's pretty nice. And then we've got the piston here. Nice. Um, nice. So basically, the Germans didn't go from... Um, uh, from a gas impingement system to a gas piston they just went from a gas piston to another gas piston rifle so it doesn't really matter um, to them that much they just probably ju just wanted more um, like modifiability I guess uh, more options uh, optics wise I would assume Okay, so we've got this part, which is the magazine well that comes off, apparently. Okay, and then we've got the mag release. Alright, and then the top uh, thing, carrying handle and, of course, optic, that comes off as a unit. Okay, apparently this rifle has 99 parts. It does not seem to be that complex to me, though. I don't know. Um, how do I take apart the optic? Do you even? I'm not sure if you do. No, it doesn't seem like it comes apart. Okay. What else can we do here? Um, does the receiver have any more parts that come off? I don't think so. There's 20 more parts. 25 more parts apparently. Uh, so <laughs> that's a thing. I don't know. Oh, of course, I haven't taken the um, the trigger group part, have I? Okay, let's do that then. And there's also a thingy there uh, in the buttstock, the button and the stuff. Okay, so... Oh, okay. Right, so the trigger group, we've got um, the hammer here. It's a pretty hefty, hefty hammer there. We've got the selector lever. Nice. Okay. That's cool. And then a thing in there. Uh, we've got the trigger down there. Comes apart. It's got some springs. And a thing in the middle. And then we've got bolt catch. Nice. Okay. And then we've got something else down there. Um, pistol grip cover okay and here we go that was actually not too difficult to disassemble even though it had 99 parts so let's quickly put it back together uh, just watch me struggle here let's put this back together first because I seem to remember how, how it works some, somewhat okay so trigger uh, it's got some springs and a thing and it goes in maybe not Okay, um, we've got, I don't know, 
some stuff around. That thing. And then trigger. Yes, perfect. Okay, we've got um, this thing. And the safety slash selector lever. Uh, this is, of course, um, a full auto rifle as well. Uh, because it's a military firearm, I do, I, it doesn't have like a burst capability. It's just full auto or single shot, uh, and that's pretty much the best. Um, okay, so let's move on to the receiver. Then we've got this thing it goes back on. Okay, and then we've got uh, barrel. Let's do barrel. Um, no not we've got stuff here so barrel goes in it's got a, like a locking color nice and then we've got let's see um, gas block uh, but oh of course piston goes in first doesn't it it should do yeah piston goes in first and then we put on the gas block okay after that we've got this uh, bayonet lug and then we've got the flash hider on the very end nice okay this is pretty cool uh, we can do the bolt as well because we're here already uh, so we've got let's see um, ejector or extractor sorry uh, we've got an ejector back here that goes in as well nice and then just goes into the carrier we've got this um, charging handle on top okay that's pretty much it for our oh there's a firing pin as well it's pretty much it for our thing for a bolt uh, it's got a pin as well okay so after that uh, I guess we can put it in put in the bolt Okay, that's nice. And then we've got this magazine well. I'm not sure why that comes apart, but it does. Uh, so let's put that back in. Nice. And we've got our uh, forehand that we can assemble. Nice. And then the bipod also. Perfect. Okay. Uh, this just goes to show you that it doesn't matter how many parts, well, it doesn't really matter how many parts a firearm has. Um, if it is designed well, um, it can be assembled and disassembled very easily. Um, so that's pretty cool. Okay. So we've got this pin here. Um, and this goes on, in. Yeah, we've got this as well. Uh, because I've disassembled some uh, some firearms with much less parts than this, which has 99, um, and I struggled, uh, but I didn't struggle at all on this one. It's it's very straightforward. Uh, it doesn't have very small parts, which is very important. Uh, you generally, when you see a part, you know what it is for and where it goes, uh, and that's very important. Okay, so it goes in, and then got a button for the buttstock that goes on. It's got a pin as well, nice, perfect. And we've got a mag, perfect. Okay, successfully assembled the G36, perfect. Right. Okay, so let's do some operation now uh, and uh, we'll take a look at how this rifle actually works. Um, so let's just uh, fire some. Nice. Okay, um, basically a classic AR style operating system. Uh, other than the gas piston, obviously. That's cool. Uh, let's take a look at a, a thingy. Um, 
cutaway? Do we not have a cutaway? That's really annoying. What the hell? Ugh, okay. No, I don't want that. Um, click and hide. Hmm. Whoa. We can just hide the receiver. That's pretty cool. Okay. So now you can see how it works pretty much. The barrel comes out uh, to here and then the bolt is uh, just connected to it. Um, there's a thingy connecting both of them. It's called a trunnion, I guess. Um, let's let's uh, go for slow. You can see the, ro the rotation of the bolt here as it comes back, ejects and then travels quite far back, picks up another round, shoves it in there, locks back, and then the hammer, the hammer falls again, nice, well, that's pretty standard, and uh, up here you can see the gas piston working, now let's get rid of the this thing as well, handguard. Okay. Okay, so now we'll be able to see the the piston working. So as it's fired, it should be trailing back. Okay, so it travels. It travels quite a bit actually. It's not uh, incredibly short travel. Let's take a look again. So, well, I guess I would say it travels like a centimeter, maybe a bit more. That's pretty good. Uh, it's not incredibly short travel. Um, and also, let's take a look again. Nice. Okay. So basically, it travels till the end of this barrel, pretty much. And it stops. Okay, that's pretty nice. This is a very straightforward rifle. Um, no funny business going on here. Very cool. Okay, uh, let's do some auto fire. Yes, yes, please. And don't do don't this. Okay. Nice. That's more like it. Change mag. Okay, can we go slow on this? I mean, it's just gonna look the same, but... Oh yeah, of course. Oh no. It's it's just the same. <laughs> there is no difference. You can see it more clearly though. How it works, I guess. Pretty cool stuff. Alright. And... Off. Uh, what else do we need to do? Unload it, sure. Um, just do that. Um, the charging handle is a bit weird, if you ask me, that you have to fold it out like that. You have to just reach in there and fold it out. But uh, the fold uh, the fold out charging handle was uh, pretty much the same on the G3 before. Uh, even, uh, but that one was even more uh, like hard to get and uh, hard to operate because it was sort of up here on the handguard. This one is at least closer uh, and a bit more, a bit easier to operate, I would assume. Anyway, uh, what else? We've got the stock that we can fold. Nice. Should work that way as well. Perfect. Bayonet. Yes, please. Where is it? Go on. Oh, that's nice. That's just like a, a green knife. Perfect. Okay. Scope. Okay. So that replaces the the unit with another one. So I guess it was uh, modifiable um, with different optics. They just didn't want this design, I guess. I don't know.
Okay, what else do we have to do? Launcher, yes please, we've got a grenade launcher. Um, where is it? I have to get, get rid of the bipod. Oh no, actually, I have to get, get, get rid of the bayonet probably. Okay. Maybe not. Um, yeah, 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 okay. So the whole forehand comes off. And there's a different forehand for the... Oh shit, grenade launcher. <laughs> nice. Okay. So that's just like a tube. Oh. What the hell happened there? Can I not shoot that? Okay, apparently I can't shoot that. Um, fine, whatever. That's interesting. Uh, what else do we have to do? Toggle X-ray. Nice. So you can pretty much see everything here. Nice. Okay. So, uh, we've pretty much done everything to this uh, G36. Um, I guess I'll do the game at some point as well. Probably not on camera though. So anyway, a very interesting rifle. I had no idea how it works before, uh, but now I do, uh, and it's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, I wish they sold some civilian versions as well. That would be that would be preferable to me. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, you can press the like button and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my other videos, and uh, I will see you next time.